We invite you to discover the secrets and expertise of precious jewelry pieces by Piaget with the collection Secrets and Lights, a mythical journey. A collection inspired by two legendary cities, Venice and Samarkand, connected by the Silk Road. Piaget is the patron of the city of Venice and has contributed to the renovation of the clock tower of the city of Doge. Locations that inspire ever more iconic pieces of Piaget expertise, including the mysterious ring linked to the lion in the clock tower. It's a mysterious ring that opens, and at the bottom you can discover the zodiac lion in diamonds on enamel. We begin with an expertise unique to Piaget that we have worked on over time, and in regards to aesthetic, the styling is always new. We keep our identifying elements, the very strong codes of the brand, but we try to reinvent them each time as a function of our inspirations and the places that inspire us. You'll find in this collection many style elements reminiscent of the art of living and the architecture of cities like Samarkand and Venice. Architectural elements that are found, for example, on this pair of earrings. One of the Piaget codes of this collection is the link between hard rock and gemstone. Here we discover a mixture of rubies and ruby root, a surprising hard stone from the same field, but with completely different characteristics. A historical and differential element for Piaget, it's a signature of the brand. The brand of ultra-luxury once again raises the veil of dexterity and mastery of craftsmen in this particularly creative collection. We meet with feather worker Nelly Saunier, a master of art, awarded the Betancourt Prize for the intelligence of the hand. She is behind the small work of art delicately made of feathers. A cuff bracelet with vibrant colors, symbols of the Piaget identity, and with feather work made in the spirit of a miniature and working on an incredibly subtle color gradient of blue to white. Le début du travail sur cette manchette, ça part d'un dessin euh, amené par, euh, par le designer euh, qui propose le sujet de mixer plume et pierre. This cuff starts with a drawing made by the designer who proposes the subject mixing feathers and stones. We start with a drawing that you see behind me on the wall and the subject is a new collection on the theme of Venice. I start working with a colorful intention, technical details, supports that will be used, all kinds of details that will create this cuff, notably with precious stones on feathers. From that point, I will look for the raw materials that will then be selected depending on their proportion and sizes that will support the feathers and that it should be in continuous harmony with what will be arranged above and below. I chose a certain number of feathers with an aesthetic desire, which takes up the Venice theme while creating a parallel with an object that makes a reference to something that I particularly like. My aesthetic choice was influenced by the Pietra Dura table, a reference model that was copied many times during the 17th and 18th centuries, made of ebony wood, with mother of pearl, with an iridescent visual aspect, with different shades and colors. Actually, it was while I was choosing the feathers that these mirror and reflection effects came to life while playing with light and shadow. Quand j'ai fait ce choix de plume, d'utiliser ces effets reflets et miroirs de la plume tout en jouant les, les clairs obscurs. Roughly speaking, containing numerous pre-prototypes, at least six months of collaboration is necessary to end up with a work of this type. The color of the feathers is natural and original. They're pheasant feathers, medallion peacock beard, and blue peacock feathers. Other pieces made of feathers? This feather tiara with a flapper's feel. Alors la tiara c'était c'était un dessin un peu un peu moins précis avec juste trois plumes. Donc c'est une évocation et j'ai eu beaucoup de de liberté pour exprimer quelque chose au travers de mon matériau, d'un choix. The tiara was a less precise drawing with just three feathers. It evokes a choice of textures and effects and I had a lot of freedom to express that with my material. So this has been a crescendo of proposals with many prototypes with different techniques to bring novelty because that's my intention in my field. I want to do something different, not repeat the same creations to repeat history. 
both in jewelry and timepieces, just like someone in fashion or design. On the tiara, you have ostrich mounted one by one. It's not the only feather, it's a composition of many feathered elements adjusted one alongside the other. You have ostrich, rooster, pheasant, Lady Amherst and Gura. There's a lifespan, which is what we'll accord to every object that we'll protect and take care of. If we take care of these objects, we can have them a long time. The feathers come from everywhere. For example, we have peacock and common pheasant feathers that come from French-bred birds. For the rarer feathers, they come from a very old stock that are like gems, that make the pendant of a necklace, and come from these birds of paradise that have reflections like little mirrors, a particular structure with its almond form, and are extremely delicate. So, at the end, it's about knowing the materials. In regards to fine jewelry, the lights of Samarkand shine like sparkling ornaments at sunset. Golden in warm tones obtained through fine work on a special stone, spessartite. We also have a marquise cut diamond that is particular to Piaget for the lighting and intensity games that we find in the stones. We have just opened this Piaget store. It's the biggest boutique in the world, spanning over 500 meters squared, and has really allowed us to help clients discover our collections, expertise, different codes of the brand, and then an atmosphere, a Piaget society that's found within the house of Piaget. The boutique situated in the heart of Haute Couture, was born with Worth in 1858. In regards to very important expertise, we find it on this element, an expertise that allows us to blend all the exterior radiance of pieces with the trade secrets of fabrication behind our rare pieces. I don't believe that there is a paradox. Ultimate luxury is to do what we do, meaning being very exclusive, keeping an elevated level of expertise in the way we work. For example, all our jewelry is designed internally. Most of our fabrication today is also done internally. I think that what's important in luxury and ultra-luxury is the control we have on its destiny. Today, I think that we have to accept that there are certain clients that are young and interested by brand. And I think it's a little bit of a paradox. We must remain exclusive without ever being arrogant. I think the fact that we have beautiful products with prices that are reasonable for some is a necessary thing for a brand like ours. If you can't afford to offer yourself a piece from this Secrets and Lights collection, admire the 93 jewellery creations and 38 timepieces that make it up. It's what dreams are made of when thinking of Venice, Samarkand and a journey along the Silk Road.